Welcome everyone. We're just going to wait a few minutes as more people start to come in. It looks like people are still joining, so we're going to wait a few more minutes as everyone gets into the room. Thank you. Okay, it looks like everyone has joined, so we're going to start this meeting. Welcome everyone to the 2021 East Capitol Street Safety and Mobility Project virtual public meeting. Next slide. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas, we'll be answering those at the end of the meeting. Online, you can select the question mark icon at the bottom of your screen, select Ask All Panelists and the Q&A panel at the bottom right at any time. Over the phone, dial star three to raise or lower your hand. For technical support, Call my colleague Jamie Phillips at 202-643-3489 and stay tuned after the meeting to add more comments online, over the phone, or via email. This meeting is being recorded and streamed live at facebook.com 
slash d dot dc and also will be available at youtube.com slash c slash d dot videos. Learn more at the project website at d dot dc dot gov slash east capital safety. And I'd like to introduce our team at DDOT, the District Department of Transportation. We have Mr. David Takur, Ms. Suha Atie, Mr. Samuel Olatunji, Ms. Alberta Paul. And here at the consultant team, we have Mr. Samir Shukla, Mr. Navan Wallace, uh, Surafel Asnike, Dennis Simpson, and Tiska, myself, Aisha Cohen, and my colleague, Jamie Phillips. And I'd like to pass it off to Samir Shukla, our technical lead, who will guide you through the presentation today. Thank you, Aisha, Aisha so much. And uh, as Aisha mentioned, my name is Samir Shukla. I'm from AECOM, who is providing design and engineering services to DDOT on this project. Uh, on behalf of DDOT, I take this opportunity to welcome everybody uh, on this meeting. Uh, for the next half an hour or so, uh, our presentation agenda will include uh, a project background followed by the, the goals of the project that we are going to discuss. And then we will be discussing the existing challenges and proposed improvements that will comprise of challenges along the entire East Capital Street corridor, the, the project limit. And then we are going to discuss two major intersections that are located in this corridor, uh, Central Avenue intersection and the Benning Road intersection. We will also discuss the overall project improvements that we are proposing in terms of traffic signals, buses and parking. We are going to discuss the project benefits for certain community features, community amenities, which are located along this important corridor, followed by the next steps. And then the session will be open for questions and answers. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of the project limit, this solid red line on your screen, that is the, the section of the East Capital Street, which is the project limit. The entire project or this section of East Capital Street corridor is located east of Anacostia Bridge, uh, kind of east of CSX and DC 295 corridor. The, the entire segment for this Project design is uh, located in Ward 7, particularly in ANC's 7C, D, E, and F. Project starts, the west terminus of the project is near Banning Stoddard Recreation Center, close to Burns Street, and this 2.1 mile long corridor goes all the way to the district border with Maryland at Southern Avenue. As you can see on this slide, there are two major metro stations located along the, the corridor for blue and silver line, Benning Road metro station, and on the east terminus, Capitol Heights metro station at the border with Maryland. There are several residences and apartments located along the corridor, uh, commercial establishments, three major schools, and Rec Center, Banning Stoddard Recreation Center that I already mentioned, and the CSX DC 295 corridor uh, west of this project segment. East Capital Street, and especially this segment of the project had the fifth highest pedestrian and bicyclist fatality rate of all arterial roads in the district. And that's why the project was chosen under DC's 2015 Vision Zero Action Plan. There have been studies, past studies done in the 
on for that project, which included the collaborative process with communities, government agencies, and stakeholders. The first study was done in 2011 that was called Far Northeast Livability Study. And the recommendation of that study was taken and then DDOT planning group conducted East Capital Street pedestrian safety studies in 2013, followed by 2016. Uh, a concept design was developed in 2016 in coordination with the communities and the stakeholders. And now DDOT is taking that concept design to the preliminary design stage and the product project is called 2021 East Capital Street Safety and Mobility Project. Goals of the project. As the name suggests, our goal, goal, the DDOT's goal is to improve safety, mobility, and accessibility for all road users along this corridor that include pedestrians, cyclists, transit riders, and drivers. How are we going to achieve these goals? As I have mentioned that this corridor has been considered a corridor where several fatalities have occurred in the past. Our aim is to provide the traffic calming measures along this corridor uh, at several intersections as well as along the roadway also. Uh, there are some techniques that we are going to be providing, we are going to be recommending in this design that includes uh, reducing the turning radii at the intersections, as you can see on the left of this screen. Wherever it's feasible, we reduce the turning radii of the crossroads that results in reduced speeds for the vehicular traffic and provide safer uh, and 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 better uh, passage for the pedestrians and bicyclists. We have added designated bike lanes for the entire length of this corridor, which is about 2.1 mile long corridor. Uh, we are providing curb extensions. They are also known bulb outs as shown on this, on this uh, exhibit. Uh, the purpose of these curb extensions is to provide uh, a shorter crosswalk and to reduce the 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 vehicle speeds for the traffic which is making a turn overall the traffic coming the purpose of traffic coming is to move traffic that includes vehicular pedestrian and bicycle in a safer more consistent way that better maintains the traffic flow Uh, the challenges that I discussed there, the purpose again is to reduce conflicts between pedestrian, cyclists, and drivers. That means all mode of transportation within the corridor. And to achieve this goal, we are adding designated bike lanes. We are adding a new feature, relatively new feature in DC called floating bus island. As you can see on your screen, the picture on the right side, which is a uh, rendering of a floating bus island. It's instead of uh, transit users when onboarding on or offboarding the buses, instead of using the sidewalk, folks are going to use this uh, bus island, which is now close to the travel lane, and the bicyclists are going to be in between the bus island and the and the sidewalk. This provides again a, a better passage, a safer and a better passage for the pedestrians and bicyclists at these intersections. Uh, we have we are also adding designated turn lanes as at key intersections for the for the vehicular traffic. And another major element of the design is that we are adding pedestrian crossing signals also known as high intensity activated crosswalk beacons or the hawk signals at several locations along the corridor. Now in next few slides, I'm going to discuss the, the current challenges along the East Corridor and uh, the, the improvement that we are proposing in this design. 
Uh, we, the known issues along the corridor includes cars regularly speeding, unsafe biking conditions, unsafe pedestrian crossings, especially at the intersections, at major intersections. And another major challenge or issue that we know of is parking that is only available in non-peak hours. And in order to resolve those issues, in order to overcome those challenges, here are the solutions that we are proposing, that DDOT is proposing in the design. For the, for the issue related to cars regularly speeding, we are adding curb bouts or the curb extension that I explained earlier. We are reducing the turning radii of the crossroads that I talked about earlier. And another major element of this project is to enhance the, the traffic signal timing for all 13 intersections located within the corridor. For the unsafe biking conditions, we are adding four plus miles of designated bike lanes, including one mile of protected bike lane. And we are removing bus and bike conflicts at intersections. To resolve the issues related to unsafe pedestrian crossings, we are adding two new pedestrian crossings, crossing signals, also known as Hawk signals that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we are adding high visibility crosswalks at all intersections along the corridor, adding curb bulb outs or curb extensions again that I mentioned earlier to provide safe pedestrian crossings and shortening the crosswalk distances at all intersections. To resolve the issues related to parking that are only available in non-peak hours, we are converting approximately 140 spots to full-time designated parking. This image, this exhibit shows here the, the existing condition along the East Capital Estate. There are three lanes in both the directions. On this exhibit, you can see the outer lane that is being showed as parking lane, but the outer lane is being used as the third travel lane in the peak directions. That means the traffic that is coming from Maryland going into DC in morning rush hour, the westbound East Capital Estates outer lane turns into a travel lane and vice versa when the evening peak hours, the eastbound outer lane gets converted into a traffic lane. This exhibit shows the proposed typical sections or the how the proposed roadway is going to look like. Uh, we have adopted these typical sections standalone at different locations or as a combination of these sections in, in different locations. The first section shows a protected bike lane. As you can see on the right side of that first typical section, there is a buffer lane buffer space provided between the travel lane and bike lane, followed by the, the existing green area and, and the sidewalk. On the, on the second typical section, in the middle one, you can see there is a designated bike lane adjacent to the travel lane, followed by a parking lane, and then the existing buffer area and the sidewalk. And the third typical section, as I mentioned, is the floating bus stop. But these typical sections are mostly, floating bus stops are mostly located closer to the intersections. So those were the, the bigger picture, bigger issues along this entire 2.1 mile corridor. Now this slide talks about uh, the current challenges at Central Avenue intersection. The first challenge that we know of is speeding on Central Avenue Southeast slip lane. As you can see, the picture on the lower left corner of this, of your screen, there is this existing Central Avenue Southeast slip lane that is shown by that red 
arrow there, which is located in front of the church. Right now, traffic that is coming from DC going to take southbound Central Avenue, that means to make a right to, to go on to Central Avenue, is they use the, the, the slip lane. And as you can see, the geometry of slip lane, they, they make a, a sharp turn there, and there is issue, rel issue related to the speeding in that area. There is no sidewalk on the south side of uh, Central Avenue in this segment. Right now, uh, pedestrians are going along the Central Avenue slip lane, going up Central Avenue, cross the Central Avenue, and then go further up to continue on East Capitol Street. And there is issue related to the speeding at this intersection as a whole. And this slide shows what DDOT is recommending to improve all these challenges, all these issues at this intersection. If we start anti-clockwise from the bottom left of the screen, uh, the design restricts the slip lane for local use. We have reduced the width of that slip lane in front of the church, in front of, front of the church that will going to eliminate the speeding issues. We also have made that slip lane only for the local use. That means only for the church use. We added a shared pedestrian and bicycle path. As I mentioned, there was no direct connectivity along the East Capitol Street that has been eliminated by this design. Uh, since we are closing the slip lane for the local use, we added a right turn lane at the intersection for the traffic coming from DC going south on Central Avenue. We added the floating bus stops. I have already discussed in detail the advantage of floating bus stops at the intersections. Another major comp component, we optimized signal timing for safety and efficiency for all users. And another major design element on the, on the top of this screen is closing the slip lane and adding a right turn lane at 49th place or Central Avenue north of East Capitol Street, kind of close to the Butterfly Park, which is located uh, west of uh, 49th place. And this is a, a rendering of the built condition, how exactly the Central Avenue intersection is going to look like once it's designed and constructed. All the elements that I discussed uh, in the previous slide, they are showing up here. Another major intersection along the, the corridor is Benning Road intersection where the Benning Road Metro station is located and the issues that public know and we all know and the challenges at this intersection are confusing, unsafe and hard to navigate U-turn movement. I'm going to discuss that a little bit more in detail later. High crash rate, unsafe conditions for pedestrians and cyclists, significant vehicular congestion, and limited access from Texas Avenue to East Capitol Street. And this is scheme here presents what uh, DDOT is uh, recommending in terms of improvement at this intersection. Again, starting anti-clockwise from the bottom left of the screen, we are adding protected bike lanes along the intersection. And a major element of the design is that we added a left turn at Texas Avenue. That means the traffic that is coming north on Texas Avenue want to go into DC, they're now able to make that left turn there. We understand that left turn was there earlier, but later it was closed. And in existing condition, there is no left turn and people have to make a right turn, try to cross those three, four lanes at the intersection and then make a very difficult U-turn to go into DC that has been completely eliminated in this design. 
we added high feasibility crosswalks, high visibility crosswalks. We added floating bus stops, kind of replaced the existing bus stops with floating bus stops. And another major design element is that we added a, a left turn lane at Benning Road. In the existing condition, there is no left turn for the vehicles and buses which are coming from the Maryland side to make a left or to go southbound on Benning Street. In the existing condition, vehicles have to cross the intersection, make a very difficult maneuver for a U-turn, go again across those four lanes to make a right onto Banning Road. That has been completely eliminated. And that was not just an issue for the for the cars, but that was a major issue for the buses also. Because of their size, buses were ending up making two or three turn point, which was a difficult maneuver that has been eliminated in this design. Uh, and we also optimized the signal timing for safety and efficiency for all users at this intersection. And this rendering like Center Avenue is again an as built uh, condition how uh, how the intersection is going to look like when it's built. Uh, uh, we cannot see the Texas Avenue on on this rendering, but it's uh, kind of uh, hidden behind that tree on the top left corner, and that left turn that has been added on Texas Avenue uh, is also there. Uh, on this slide, just want to kind of show uh, the existing traffic signals along the corridor and the improvement that we are recommending in this design. Uh, there are 12 traffic signals along the corridor, which are uh, shown with red dots uh, on this slide. And there are four unsignalized crossings at different locations along the corridor. Uh, in the proposed signals, now we have uh, 13 traffic signal and two pedestrian signals, pedestrian crossing signals, hawk signals that I mentioned earlier. Uh, in brief, we increase the signalized intersections that includes new signals at 49th Street and 56th Place. The design added two pedestrian crossing signals or the hawk signals at 42nd Street and 47th Street. And we removed two redundant unsignalized crosswalks uh, at 40th and 60th Street. In terms of bus improvements, as I mentioned earlier, when we were discussing, when I was talking about the Benning Road intersection, the U turn movement removed at Benning Road. Bus stops converted to floating bus stops or bus islands. There is no change in bus routes and there is minor shifts in existing bus stop locations when we provided the floating bus stop, but that change uh, uh, actually uh, made the, the pedestrian mobility and accessibility uh, better and safer at all the intersections. In terms of parking improvements, the parking priorities that we had was to maintain and add parking in heavily residential areas. We are maintaining and adding parking near community amenities. We are converting time restricted parking to full time parking, as I also, also mentioned earlier. And we are minimizing reduction of parking spaces uh, with this new configuration at selected intersections. By the numbers, we are adding 270 full-time and or zoned parking spaces. We are approximately adding 141 time-restricted parking spaces that have been converted to full-time and or zoned parking spaces. We added 37 new parking spaces and removed approximately 106 parking spaces. In next few slides, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the improvement 
that this design proposes at selected uh, public amenities or the public features that are located along the corridor. Starting from west of the corridor at Benning Stoddard Recreation Center, uh, we are adding floating bus stops across Stoddard Place that is going to provide safer bus on and off boarding and safer pedestrian crossing. We are adding new bicycle access. We are providing new bicycle access to the recreation center. And we removed unsafe redundant crosswalk at 40th Street. For Benning Road Metro Station, I, I highlighted and discussed that in detail when we were when I was talking about the Benning Road intersection improvement. But again, here we have added safer pedestrian crossing and access for the metro station, added adjacent protected bike lanes, enhanced the vehicular and pedestrian safety, and enhanced the bus connections at this corridor near Benning Road Metro Station. Uh, there are several schools located along the corridor and some of the improvements that uh, this design is recommending that this design is proposing include uh, safer pedestrian crossings and access at all school locations, adjacent unsignalized crosswalks at 40th Street, 56th place and 57th place have been removed. We proposed traffic signal at 56th place and provided new bicycle access and connectivity to these schools. For improvements for Carver senior apartments, again, we have added full-time parking adjacent to apartments. We provided new bicycle access, uh, new pedestrian signals and curb bulbouts, the curb, the bulb, uh, the curb extensions for safer pedestrian crossings at 47th Street North, Northeast, close to the Carver senior apartments and added new floating bus stops that's going to provide again safer bus on and off boarding and safer pedestrian crossings uh, for saint uh, catholic church which is located uh, close to which is located at central avenue intersection near the slip lane as i mentioned uh, we provided better pedestrian access, provided new bicycle access. There is no change in parking at this area. We reduced vehicular speeds in the Central Avenue slip lane that I discussed, that I mentioned uh, in detail when talking about the Central Avenue intersection improvement. And we removed cut through traffic from the Central Avenue. That means now the slip lane will be exclusively used by the church traffic. Uh, for Butterfly Park, which is located uh, north of uh, East Capitol Street at Central Avenue intersection, uh, the design again proposes uh, safer pedestrian crossings and access, uh, added the new floating bus stops, uh, reduced the vehicular speed by taking off the slip lane that I mentioned earlier, uh, provided the bicycle access, and we added more parking space in this area. Improvement for East Capital Estate Farm. Now coming uh, almost to the east terminus of the project uh, for East uh, Capital Urban Farm, we removed the unsignalized crosswalk, existing crosswalk at 60th Street added new bicycle access, provided safer pedestrian crossings and access at this intersection with, with the Southern Avenue, and there is no net change in parking at this area. And at the Eastern terminus of the project, uh, at border with Maryland, where Capitol Heights Metro Station is located, uh, again, uh, the design recommends uh, several improvements that include uh, new bicycle access, 
uh, turning, reduced turning radii, uh, which is uh, we reduce the, the turning radii of uh, Southern Avenue traffic, which is coming south, trying to make a right turn on East Capitol Street, posing some uh, uh, dangerous situation for not just for the vehicles because of the speeding, but also for the pedestrian crossing in that area. So we reduced the turning radii at that intersection, provided safer pedestrian crossings and access, and uh, a major change at the at the metro station with we, we recommended removing turning vehicle conflicts at the entrance uh, by by slightly making a change at that entrance at the metro station. And uh, with that, uh, the next steps, uh, we are gonna review our comments and questions for the, the time that is available. We'll, we'll open the session for question and answer and continue reviewing the comments received by email. Uh, in terms of the, the project timeline, preliminary design to be finalized in summer of this year, summer of 2021, and uh, the detailed design completion and construction information will start forthcoming starting year 2022. And with that, I will hand it over back to my colleague Aisha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samir. Um, so as a reminder, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, you can dial star three or select the three dots icon to raise your hands and ask a question live. To submit your questions, comments, and ideas by Tuesday, May 18th, you can email Samuel Olatunji at samuel.olatunji at dc.gov or 202-671-4637. You can also email Jamie Phillips at jphillips at inspiregreen.com or 202 3489 online. You can uh, use the uh, comment form, which I'll explain in the next slide. And also as a reminder, this meeting yes. is being recorded and will be posted live on facebook.com slash c.dc and also is available on DDOT's YouTube page, youtube.com slash c slash DDOT videos. You can learn more at our project website at ddot.dc.gov slash East Capital Safety. And here is a preview of the Title VI public comment form that you'll be seeing at the conclusion of this uh, presentation. And you can access it anytime at rebrand.ly slash East Capital Safety dash comments. As a recipient of federal assistance, DDOT must ensure that all its programs, activities, and public meetings are conducted in compliance with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This act yes. ensures that non-discrimination based off of race, color, or national origin. The Title VI yes. public meeting participant questionnaire is used to help DDOT ensure that we are informing the public and conducting our meetings in a non-discriminatory manner in compliance with Title VI. Project comments or and or concerns may be submitted through this form. We appreciate anyone who is willing to complete the form. Thank you for your participation. And with that, I wanted to open the floor to all of you. Um, you can raise your hand if you want to answer and or ask your question um, live. And I already see quite a lot of questions coming up in the chat. I have oh, about oh. 25 um, here. And don't worry if we don't get to your question live, we'll be putting together a project fact sheet, which will be answering all of your questions, which uh, we can email to you and also we'll be posting on the project website and social media. Um, so, handing it back to Samir with the first question when you're ready. Okay, 
I don't see Samir's video, but I think he's listening. Hi, Aisha. Right. Yes, I'm Hi. ready. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so one question that came in from Elizabeth H is will this project impact the chronic speeding on the corridor? For example, from ATVs, those are all terrain vehicles. So the question is, uh, the road is being used by ATVs and are we doing anything specifically to reduce the speed of ATVs or in general, the vehicular speeds along the corridor? Can you please repeat that again? Uh, she's asking for both about chronic speeding in general and in particular about the ATV uh, vehicles. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in terms of the, the speeding along the corridor, as, as I mentioned earlier in the project, that is the, the sole purpose of the project that we, we are going to reduce the speed. Uh, and and kind of the, the traffic calming measures that we provided instead of three lanes, now we are going to have two lanes. We made significant improvements along the, the corridor at intersections in terms of reducing the turning area that I have been talking about, as well as um, the, the number of lane, reduction in the number of lane from three, now we have two lanes. So all these measures that I discussed, they are going to significantly improve this challenge or issue related to the speeding along the corridor. That is one of the, the prime concerns along the corridor and we are addressing that in this design. When it comes to the speeding issues related to ATV, I guess this is more like uh, uh, an administration question uh I, I i guess i will have to uh maybe discuss it with ddot and and get some additional information if there is any particular section of the 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 corridor where the atv's speeding is issue or, or not and and can provide uh, a more detailed answer i would i would even request the person if they can explain, they can send maybe an email or uh, place this question in, in, in a little bit more detail. If there is a, any specific area where the, the issue related to the ATV speeding is uh, concerned and, and we'll have a common D dot address that issue and, and answer that question. Okay, thank if you. If I may that. interject. Uh, can sure. you hear me? Okay, if I may interject there, it's important to note that we are at 30%, just approaching 30% at the moment. And, um, you know, there are probably mitigation measures that are available to us. And I think we should, you know, moving on with design between 30 and 65%, cons uh, consult with um, you know, the police and various other organizations to see how, 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 um, this problem with the altering vehicles is being mitigated and implement, implement something into this project if possible. So um, it's a very good point and thank you for that. Okay, thank you, um, David and Samir for your answers. We wanted to move on to the hands raised. Uh, I think the first hand that got raised was by Gordon Chafin, if you're still on the line. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I wanted to thank all of you for implementing this project. It's been a number of years where, where we've needed changes immediately. And so thank you for, for getting this going. My question relates to the large number of unprotected bike lane segments relative to the, 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 min the minority that, that is protected. You show a cross section in your slides where you have the paint only bike lane straddling two travel lanes and the parking lane. And so can you can you say why it's acceptable for you to have paint only bike lanes there? Uh, the goal of the district, my understanding is that these are supposed to be all ages, uh, all abilities. And I don't think that anybody will send their 12 year old on on what you call there a, a designated bike lane. 
Yeah, uh, no, sure. Thank you. Thank you for, for your question. And, uh, and, and DDOT understands that there are certain sections within the corridor where due to the, you know, the space available, we were constricted to provide the, the, the protected bike lanes. And, and the reason is, as you can even see on the typical section, there is a limited right of way with, with uh, residences and properties located uh, beyond the beyond the sidewalk that the D dot cannot acquire. We also kind of during the planning stage analyzed in in very detail to uh, reduce the the median width and and accommodate the uh, the buffer space there for to to make the the bicycle lane protected. But again, there was several constraints uh, in doing so because at several locations, especially from Benning, Benning Road all the way to the Maryland border, uh, on the median, uh, there are several uh, WAMATA's uh, uh, metro, metro vans are located. So it is, it is not possible to kind of move those vans and, and create some space there for the for the protected bike lane. Uh, one thing that I can add here, I can mention that even though there are unprotected bike lanes, but this design considers a very safe transition kind of from protected to uh, unprotected bike lane and vice versa. So that has been one of the major consideration when we design uh, these protected and unprotected bike lanes there. Thanks. And just so I understand what you're saying, in the the the, the middle cross section there where it says designated bike lane, you're saying that between the median and the curb, you ha you only have room. Uh, you're saying, in essence, you're prioritizing parking over the maximum safety of the bicyclists. You're saying you need to have parking there. This is kind kind of a compromise. Uh between both i mean of course safety and 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 the parking lane uh that that kind of section shows parking there but there are still some locations where we do not have the parking lane but especially close to the school areas the the residential areas and some of the commercial establishment uh during the the planning stage there was concern uh, uh, on eliminating the parking also along the corridor. So kind of in, in terms of a compromise between uh, parking and, and the protected bike lane, uh, this, this concept design was developed in, in 2016. And uh, that's kind of, that's what, you know, was recommended uh, then. Uh, Thank you. I, Okay, yeah. Okay, um, I wanted to go to another raised hand from Michael. Are you still on the line? Uh, yes, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Michael Havlin. Um, some of you might know from me from the Friends of the Streetcar Group. I live over in 7FO2 off of Texas Ave. Um, I gotta say, I was, I was pretty excited for this presentation when I saw the, what was on the website. Um, but now after seeing um, particularly the Benning and East Capitol intersection, which is really, you know, technically they're different intersections, but it's really one big intersection of Texas, East Capitol, Benning and, and Central. Um, because what I saw there um, didn't really seem to emphasize pedestrian safety in any significant way. Um, because right now, the I mean, as we all know, it's it's car dominated. And I mean, I like that there's the the um the bus floating bus stops i think that's great um there's some semblance of bike lanes needs to be improved of course but i don't see vehicles giving anything up for this it seems like the pedestrian safety was kind of neglected at this intersection um and so i'd really love to see that emphasized more especially so if you if you live off of texas ave which i do um right now to get to the metro even though it's only 100 feet from the texas and east capital intersection You've got to cross, you know, one, two, about about fourteen lanes of traffic to get to that metro. That's that's right there, um, 
and I don't see that really being addressed here. And, and in fact, it almost looks like there's there's more vehicle lanes. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Um, at least when you add in the bus lanes, and maybe there's more vehicle lanes. So it doesn't seem like there's much for pedestrians. And what I would suggest, um, because there's alternatives that look much better than this in other parts of the city, and I think east of the river, we should get you know the best when it comes to pedestrian safety. Uh, would be what 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 what's occurring at the uh, the Pentworth Metro Station, the George Avenue Metro Station, which is a very similar intersection as far as it's kind of multiple roads all kind of meeting all at once in an awkward way. And what they have over there is they have this plaza that people can walk directly across. They don't have to cross 17 lanes of traffic all at once. Um, or similarly, what, what's in Chinatown where you have the diagonal crosswalks. Um, so I'd, I'd really like to see um, you know more aggressive bulb outs particularly at that intersection, uh, if that would be possible for you. Um, and then also, would you please consider doing something beefier, like what they have in Pentworth with the Georgia Avenue Metro Station uh, or in Chinatown? I don't see why uh, in Ward 7 we should be more car dominated than, than those parts of the city. Um, so, you know, I really like that it's being improved. I, I love the bus islands, um, but it doesn't seem like pedestrian safety was really emphasized here. Um, and I'd also just like to add, we have to keep in mind that the, the streetcar is also going to be here, which is awesome. Uh, and it's going to be right at the Benning Road Metro Station. And this, this should be a, a transit oriented intersection. And uh, right now what I'm seeing is a car oriented intersection. Uh, so I think that, you know, pedestrian access to the Metro Station and the future terminus of the streetcar should be more sure. emphasized. Um, thank you. Thank you. No, oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, Michael. Thank you so much for for your question. Um, uh, we at D dot definitely respect your opinion on that. Uh, and again, uh, I'm going to mention that uh, since this is uh, a major, I mean, if you know, this is considered as a major arterial in in D dot's classification system that carries significant, you know, vehicular volume of from Maryland coming into DC in peak hours. So when we did the analysis, when in the planning stage as well as design stage, uh, there was uh, kind of a consideration to reduce the number of lane, but then that was ending up, you know, in in, in terms of very very long queue, as well as uh, a, a very, I mean, worse than level of service F, which is kind of an engineering terms for the. For the level of service at, at these intersections and and that's why we kind of ended up reducing the i mean putting these these many lanes in there so uh in terms of uh kind of another question was if we can just combine all these roads and design benning road texas avenue and central avenue as as one as one intersection i think that again is a, a very challenging task, knowing that this is a major arterial uh, in there. Uh, I can I can assure you that there have been a lot of study done in the planning stage, and uh, a lot of options were analyzed, and this was the one where which was kind of accommodated as, as a compromise between the. The, the level of services at the intersection and the pedestrian and, and vehicular safety there. Uh, I would also request George Brannion from DDOT's planning team. I guess he can also kind of highlight some of the some of these issues that were studied during the planning stage. George, you want to discuss a little bit there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Samir. Uh, yeah, so um, my name is George Brandon. I, I manage the active transportation team, but for um, most of my time, I did pedestrian coordinator and and ran the uh, planning study for this uh, for this corridor project starting in 2012. Um, we finally finished it up in 2016. Um, so what we what we found that there were a lot of problems at this intersection due to the width of the median. The median caused the timing to be very discontinuous and, and difficult for pedestrians to cross all in one uh, walk phase, one pedestrian phase. So the, what you see in this slide is a result of a lot of work of trying to figure out how to uh, get curb to curb distance down. I believe we started out at 130 feet curb to curb 
um, from one side of the road to the other. Uh, that's an immense distance, and we've got it down to about 100 in this version. Um, and so what we what we were able to do with this, with, with all the signal timing, um, is to allow people to start on one side of East Capitol and Benning and cross it all the way to the other in one signal phase much more conveniently than it happens today. Um, and then you know, the, the bike lanes are substantial in this area. These are fully uh, protected, separated uh, bike lanes. Um, and then, um, so so we you know tried to uh, to use that the width of the original curb, go out um, and and create these uh, this buffer area, hard concrete and and uh, islands or grass buffers. Um, to protect the bike lane as, as, as much as possible. And we've realigned Texas to be a much more of a T intersection, which uh, keeps this, the fast moving turning cars as it, it causes them to go slower. Um, it also uh, takes away a lot of the hazards by allowing people to go out of Texas Avenue and take the left directly onto westbound East Cap. That's never been allowed before. It's never been possible. That uh, again was something the community gave us a lot of uh, feedback on. Um, was the ability to do that um, so that uh, cars don't take a right and then do a U-turn um, in the intersection, uh, which can cause a lot of problems from traffic safety perspective. So we did a lot of, uh, we, we went through a lot of iterations to try to get the pedestrian, uh, the pedestrian accessibility and safety at this intersection uh, to a much better level than it is currently. Um, well, Thank you for the details. I know we got a lot of people, so I'll just say say one real quick thing, uh, if that's okay. Um, I mean, I, I I really think it's great that the bike lanes are there and the, the bus island is there, um, but cars have to give up something. I mean, what are we gonna do? Like, is this intersection in this part of the city gonna be car dominated forever? It seems like pedestrians are getting breadcrumbs compared to what uh, the other modes of transit are getting. And you know, I, I did a. Uh, I'm actually doing an isochrone analysis of the Benning Road Metro right now. Uh, there are 37,000 Ward Seven residents within a walking distance of one of the the future streetcar stops. Uh, a significant chunk of when you look at the travel times of walking are in the Marshall Heights and Benning Ridge neighborhood. And if the city is going to spend all this money to bring the streetcar to Benning Road Metro Station, but then not have uh, a, a much improved pedestrian. Um, you know, intersection here, uh, I think the city should reconsider making this more pedestrian friendly because what's happening for pedestrians here seems like breadcrumbs compared to the other modes. Um, so I just hope that, um, you know, we really are in the preliminary and that this isn't simply, um, you know, uh, uh, I hope that our comments are taken uh, with, with serious weight, not just uh, check boxes. Thank you. Well, actually, I'm curious what, what, what kind of ideas do you have uh, that would make this more pedestrian friendly? Well, I, I'm not uh, a transit engineer by any means or an urban planner, but some ideas that I suggested earlier uh, would be uh, something similar to what we have in Chinatown uh, by the Chinatown Metro Station, where those two very busy roads meet and you've got diagonal crossings where the whole, the whole intersection shut down, shuts down for pedestrians. Um, that, and so that way the whole intersection is, is only pedestrians for, I don't know if it's 30 seconds or what. Um, and then another alternative would be, uh, like by the Pentworth Metro, uh, or Georgia. I'm not sure what, what it's called Georgia Avenue Metro. Um, I think Georgia Ave and 16th street might be the intersection, uh, where the whole thing is basically hashed over. Um, so those are two ideas. Um, and I think if cars have to give something up in order for pedestrians to have uh, safer streets and more efficient access to transit. I think it's worth it. Yeah, no, that, those are interesting examples. Uh, we can certainly take a look. They're, they're on a completely, I'll be honest, they're on a pretty bit different scale than, than this, this road and this section um, in terms of traffic volumes and the size of the intersection. Uh, we did, you know, one of the things we did is the entire remainder of the corridor uh, both going towards Stoddart Rec to the west and going all the way to southern, we took a lane away in both directions um, at, at peak hour. So, so we did take some things from from the vehicular side to improve, uh, to to make it safer uh, to calm traffic, to make it safer to cross, and make it safer to bike on. So, we we weren't uh, trying to just give everything to the cars. We basically kept the number of lanes the same in this in this intersection. We just tightened it up a lot. 
Okay, thank you, you, George and Samir for that response. Um, I wanted to move on to another raised hand. If uh, Teresa uh, Givens is on the line, would you like to ask your question? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I wasn't quite sure if what I was looking at when he put the um, picture up of East Capitol Street from 58th Street to 61st Street. He said something about removing the crosswalks. I'm not sure if you're walking down towards the subway on the northeast side, you may want to cross the street before you get to Central Avenue. Then there was nothing for the cars coming out of, I think it's 61st Street on the northeast side. There is a street that enters into East Capitol Street, and they have a tendency now to cross the traffic coming into DC from Maryland, to, they will cross the street all the way to get to Central Avenue because they don't have any too many options. So I don't know if I, if, the, if you remove all the streets, the crosswalks from 50th, 58th to 61st Street, I think that's what that is. If it's not 60th Street, those cars come out of that street. It's a two way street. And then the pedestrians may want to cross, which means somebody's going to get hit between 58th and Southern Avenue. So that's not going to work. Uh, thank you for your question. So um, this, the, the image that you are seeing right now on your screen, that is the area, ma'am, you are talking about from 58th yes. to uh, Southern Avenue? Yes. yes. And you removed all the crosswalks. So, so we 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 have we have a crosswalk over here at this intersection, which is 58th Street Northeast. Correct. And then, and then we have a crosswalk at Southern Avenue. There, 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 there was a crosswalk. That? That's, that's 58th, 59th, 60th, and 61st. All of those, even though they're not streets. The people walking from 58th Street on the northeast side at some point are going to cross the street, and I guarantee you it won't be Southern Avenue to get to the metro because you've removed all the crosswalks in a four and what is normally a four block area. So, so there was an existing crosswalk, unsignalized crosswalk at this location, and we agree that has been removed. And that was pretty close to uh, the the Southern Avenue crosswalk, but this has been removed purely because of the the safety consideration because it has been very close to the to this intersection. And instead of here now, people are going to be crossing at the intersection. So that's the only crosswalk we removed at this location. What, uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is. A crosswalk doesn't determine where a person crosses the street. But a person, the senior citizen building, which is on 58th Street Northeast, they're more apt to cross when they see that the traffic is clear. Regardless of a crosswalk, you now got them walking on the Northeast side from 58th all the way to Southern Avenue to get to the Metro. People are going to cross without that. They, re they put the sidewalk there they put the crosswalk there. There were actually two crosswalks originally, one for the senior citizen building high rise, and then they removed them when they were going to put the Walmart up. The Walmart never came, the sidewalk's still there. I mean, the crosswalk's still there, and people are crossing the street at unsignaled intersections. You're correct. I don't think you putting a cross, removing the crosswalk is going to stop them you may have caused more people to jaywalk versus wait till they get to Southern Avenue. And so 60th Matt, Street, that street enters East Capitol Street and they cross from, they, they will go to whatever side of East Capitol Street they want to go on. They will cross the whole East Capitol Street to go to Southern Avenue. So ma'am, your, so, ma your suggestion is to put a crosswalk uh, on say, for example, we have this 58th Street and then put a crosswalk at 59th also. That's what your suggestion is, I guess. I'm not sure of the numbers because they removed them when they- yeah, I, mean, I mean, if you, 
Yeah, if you so see where this, that, where that street is between the, the empty lot where the Walmart should, was going to be, there's a inter, there's a street right there. There was a crosswalk there. Which is, which is this is state, and as I said, yeah, that has been eliminated because it was very close to both the intersection, 58. It's not that close. As, as Southern walk. Avenue. It's but, not that I walk that. Okay. Having said that, I mean, no, your your suggestion is taken. And okay. and as as David mentioned that this is preliminary design, we are going to go back and and look into it. The the only reason to eliminate that crosswalk again was because of these two major intersections that is going to have significant capacity issue if we add a hawk signal or the signalized pedestrian crossing at this location. But having said that, your your point is taken, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Samir, uh, for answering that question. I wanted to move on to another hand we have raised from uh, Mrs. Rebecca Morris. Rebecca, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm here. Hi, I'm Rebecca Morris. I'm a commissioner um, within the general area. I have two. One of the, one of the questions I have was um, when you talk about bike access. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean bike lane or you're just adding a capital bike station to that area? And my second question was when you guys created this, I noticed around um, Benner Road Station where you said there's going to be, I believe you said there was supposed to be a bike lane over there. Um, it seems as though streetcar wasn't in mind in some of the some of the plans that you have. Um, and I know, and I know you said you guys created this like back in 2016. I believe that's what I heard from when you were speaking to someone else. Um, so are you guys like going to go along with some of the plans that you have? Um, because some of it's a little dated, um, in regards to the plans that will be coming. Are you guys going to re uh, like update it or talk to the people who's doing the streetcar plans? Because if there's going to be a streetcar, over next to that station, how how much room will there be a streetcar, bus station, and a, a bike lane? That's that's a whole lot going on. Um, can can you can you further or explain to me? Yeah, thank you for your question, ma'am. Yeah, we can talk about the the Benning Road right right now because this is here on the screen. So, in terms of the the streetcar project. Uh, the street car is going to end at uh, right before the East Capitol Street intersection. I, I think that 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 portion of the the Benning Road is, is hidden behind this blue box where it says optimize signal timing for safety and efficiency. That's where the street car is going to stop. Having said that, yeah, this project since this is only the preliminary design. But this project, this design will be coordinated once the the plan or or the or the or the preliminary for the street car is finalized. There would be an integration of a street car uh, to East Capital Street at that leg of the intersection, which is kind of the northeast of East Capital Street. So, so that will be that will be done, uh, and uh, and it will not have significant impact along. East Capital Street, that that floating bus stop, those protected bike lanes, they are still gonna stay as is. The most of the changes are gonna be on the on the Banning Road, kind of north of uh, East Capital Street. That's where the changes are going to happen. And can and I design? Can I, sorry. Can I make a, a suggestion as well? Um, and this is goes to the question for the ATVs. Um, when you guys are redoing the road, is it possible you can create the technology that actually slows down cars or slows down um, motor vehicles? Because um, the speed, even though you, I, I see that you guys are turning, you know, to redoing the road, but because we have traffic coming in from Maryland and from D.C. and local, um, just people who are just around the neighborhood or whatever, um, people tend to people take illegal turns. Um, just because they feel like they can. And if there isn't going to be uh, some sort of MPD lights or um, cameras, um, can you in 
can you do the technology or use the technology that actually slows down the cars? So if that if they're driving on that road anyway, they have no choice to be slower. That's 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 a very good suggestion, ma'am. And uh, and and yeah, we agree that even though we are providing this uh, this. Uh, uh, traffic calming measures along the corridor, reducing the number of lanes, improving the signal efficiency, is providing the, the curb extensions and the protected bike lanes. But still, there are going to be instances where people are, uh, cars are going to, to um, be speeding. That's a good suggestion. And it's taken in terms of right now, the, the speed limit is 25 and 30 miles, depending on the section of the corridor. But in terms of providing some ITS features, cameras, and to use the, the the speed of the corridor, that is something can be can be considered in the next phase of the design. Sure. Yeah, and very, uh, very welcome suggestion there. Thank you very much. Um, I'm working on both projects, and there will be coordination between the project in design and for sequencing of construction. Um, between Benning Road and the East Cap project. I did I did trace along um, where, where the lady mentions uh, we removed the crosswalk and it is indeed quite a long stretch and we'll, we'll definitely look into what we can do for you there. And in terms of traffic coming measures, I'm sure the police have got some ideas also in terms of what uh, is possible for the sort of speed limits we have along here. So fantastic comments coming through. Keep them coming, thank you very much. Um, and back to you, Senator. Thank you so much, David, for that. And Donna, can you go back to the the Southern Avenue intersections at the end of the project where uh, she mentioned about the the bike access? Yeah, this one all the way to the right. Uh, it's hard to tell these, okay. So, so yeah, to answer your question, ma'am, yeah, we are adding the, the bike lanes in some places protected and some places unprotected bike lane along this corridor. Right now, at least in this preliminary design, there is no plan for the, for the capital bike share, but uh, since this is going to be a major, uh, major, uh, you know, uh, facility in terms of adding the bike lanes, uh, I'm sure DDOT and the other regulating agencies can consider that suggestion to, to add a, uh, to add that somewhere in this, in this area. The term of bike access, I mean, bike access, me bike lanes, just quick clarification. Yeah, no, that's good. That was more like bike lanes to access these facilities kind of approach. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, um, Samir and David, for answering that last question. We have another hand raised from Sinta. Uh, Sinta, are you online? I am. I, can you hear me? Great. I can hear you. Um, so, so thank you uh, uh, for your presentation. Um, there's been a lot of meaningful improvements. I actually live. Um, quite close to the East Capital Urban Farm, and I'm also a cyclist. I, I commute to work, at least before the pandemic. Um, and I kind of wanted to echo earlier comments that were made regarding the, the bike lanes, um, adding more protection. I mean, right now, just from as a matter of personal safety, I don't use the East Capital main corridor just because of the aggressive driving. Um, and I, I appreciate the different levels of bike lane protection, but the very first one, I don't think is sufficient with how aggressive um, a lot of the car drivers have been. And another call, another commenter had referenced the issues of the ATVs, um, something that's been a chronic problem um, for our, our neighborhood and our, our community. Um, so I don't I, I agree that I don't think someone would put their child in those lanes if it's something to meant to be more um, community friendly. Mm -hmm. Having that many lanes going in both directions, and I understand it's a main artery of traffic, but having that many lanes going in both directions 
um, really makes it turns into a, a, a racetrack, to be quite frank with you. Um, and it only seems to have gotten worse over the this past year with um, the pandemic. And then I also agree that there should be more pedestrian amenities. Again, I understand it's a main artery, but folks that live over here tend to be more public transportation, um, have more con public transportation reliant um, than other parts of the city. And I think that that should be something that's considered um, because maybe that's a way to get people out of their cars. And then lastly, I just wanted to know how far west do these new lanes um, go? Will they connect with the, the, the Anacostia River, River Trail lanes? Yeah, so, yeah, so no, thank you. Thank you for uh, kind of your, your suggestions there and your you know, brief summary for the corridor. I think we have discussed uh, this issue of um, kind of unprotected bike lanes and, and George has highlighted and mentioned, you know, all the effort that was done in planning stage, but there are certain constraints that uh, we, we we appreciate that uh, public understand that due to the the constraints there, it is in some stretches it is not possible to add the protected bike lanes for all of the above reasons that I and, and George highlighted earlier. But as David mentioned, that uh, in the next phases of design, that ITS implementation can be a consideration in terms of uh, further. Uh, emphasizing to to reduce the the vehicular traffic along the corridor. I mean, there have been quite a bit uh, improvement done in the corridor that in terms of reducing the number of lanes from three to two lanes, adding curb extensions uh, at those intersections, which also kind of give uh, a physical constraint to driver uh, when it uh, not only just makes a turn, but also when it goes uh, along the the corridor. Um, if you see the overall picture of the, the corridor, there are several signalized intersection along the corridor, which again is going to play a role in terms of reducing uh, the vehicular speed along the corridor. So some of those measures are already there, but in terms of implementation, in terms of providing some additional ITS features, that is that suggestion is very well taken and, and will be considered in, in next phases of design. Uh, the, yeah. the 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 I'm second sorry. segment. Sorry, please go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask one question: if if the lanes are going to go in as proposed, um, I know headed and towards from uh, the Capitol down to the Navy Yard, there are these white um, pole um, that are lo running along the bike lanes that I think at least make it more visible that that there's space where um, cyclists are going. Can something like that be included? I mean, that's not taking as much away in terms of the lane for some of those um, less protected bike lanes. There are, there are certainly uh, barriers being proposed, which are kind of, I think we should have added that in the typical sections, but yeah, there are certain barriers proposed. Uh, at the protected bike lane area, the buffer area, but again, your your suggestion is well taken, and and, and we are gonna, DDOT is gonna do some some analysis and some study to see if there is some kind of uh, you know kind of barrier or partition can be provided between the travel lane and and the bike lane. As I said, there is definitely a space constraint, but but that will be. That that is that suggestion is taken and will be analyzed in in next phases of design. And I guess the the second question, second part of the question was how far those lanes go from the end of the project, ma'am. Far west do they go? Up. Do what they was the second? Do they how how far west will the bike lanes go? Do they connect up to the, the Anacostia River Trail lanes? How does that work? Uh, 
as i mentioned right now the the limit of the project is uh up to benning started recreation center which is kind of the west terminus of the project i mean i can and, and david can can correct me if i'm wrong there is there is a study kind of proposed to connect the the bike bike lanes from this point onward toward west to to connect it to connect it to the to the whitney young bridge that study is is underway or, or ddot is considering that that study for the continuity of the bike lane across csx and 295 corridor which is this is not part of this project but that that is something will be under consideration by ddot as as another study as another project yeah i if i can just jump in here because this is a, a, a very good question that comes up uh, all the time um from a lot of people who bike east of the river who want uh, both pedestrian and bike connectivity to um, the Anacostia Riverwalk Trail. This is probably the biggest um, barrier of, of pet and bike access in the entire city. Um, this uh, two, you know, the four lane uh, tunnel underneath the uh, 295 and CSX right of way was built in 1957. Um, it's a terrible wall and there's just no easy way around it. It's It would be a massive, complete reconstruction of the tunnel. Um, and that's certainly not the scope of this project. Um, that is something, as Samer said, we're, uh, we are uh, looking at this, this how we can get, um, figure out some way to get connectivity along the East Cap Corridor through um, uh, through that, that barrier. I will say that we have a, uh, a, 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 a connection that is, that is uh, um, a little bit of a stopgap measure Go just go down Minnesota a few blocks. You get to um, to G Street Southeast, and there's a therapeutic rec center there. And if you cross over the abandoned or not the the uh, unused uh, Shepherd Branch uh, rail line, you can actually walk through there and get to Anacostia Riverwalk Trail, going towards uh, the uh, skate, uh, the roller skating pavilion. Um, that is something we're working on now. We're in negotiations. We're working with Park Service as well as CSX. And we're trying to figure out, uh, uh, get to get to yes on a, a trail connection there. It's not very long, uh, but it would be one way for folks who live um, you know, in the Greenway neighborhood, um, uh, Fort DuPont area to get uh, a much easier access to the uh, Anacostia Riverwalk system. But uh, uh, we are well aware that that, uh, that this is a, a major barrier. Um, it is an extremely difficult one to solve. It's not, there's, there's no quick, easy way um, to uh, to get pet bike connectivity up on the, along that alignment over to the river. Yes, thanks, thanks so much, George, for this clarification. Yes, thank you, George, and thank, thank you, Samir. Um, I wanted to go to another raised hand that we have from Ms. Charlene Killens. Uh, Charlene, are you still on the line? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Uh, I apologize. Um, I had a little difficulty and I got on, on a um, line a little late. I just have uh, a few concerns and you could have mm -hmm. already went over it. But first concern was I've been living here on East Capitol Street for almost uh, about 35 years. I have seen um, so many car accidents and I have witnessed several deaths at the intersection of um, 55th and East Capitol Street on the Northeast side. And also there's been some accidents on the Southeast side. Man, the last for three years, it's been terrible. They um, get together on two or three days a week and, and they speed up and down the um, uh, East Capitol Street. There are no um, cameras taking pictures of cars that is traveling at fast rates. We have some children that live in the block and some senior citizens such as myself. And I promise the neighbors, they speeding right now, they speeding right now. 
I promised the neighbors that I would ask you all, can you uh, put some speed cameras up? Now, there was one going east at the school, but never, none coming down like into the district. They come and speed and pay the red light, no mind. Now, the second concern is, will this affect the parking space along East Capitol Street between, say, 55th and, and uh, 49th Street? Will it affect the parking spaces? Could you please address uh, those two issues? Yeah, sure. No, thank you so much for your question. And and, and you're right. I, I, I think we have discussed that, that uh, in the next phases of design, some ITS features will be considered along the corridor that, that may include the speeding cameras also. So, so that have been discussed earlier. Uh, we, we, we have been also highlighting throughout this presentation that, that uh, the, 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 the purpose of the project is to calm the traffic down along the corridor. We are implementing several design techniques to do that. We, we talked about the, the curb extensions, curb bulb outs, reducing the number of lanes from three to two in each direction, uh, improving the, the signal phasing in, in a way to reduce the speeding of the car, adding floating bus stops. So there are several measures implemented along the corridor, but on top of that, the ITS in terms of the cameras will also be considered in the next phases of design. In, in terms of the parking spaces, as you can see right now on your screen, especially in the residential areas, especially in the school areas, we have avoided any impact to the parking, as you can see here in this between 55th and 53rd block and from 53rd block and from 53rd to Division Avenue, the parking space is available as is. In fact, those spaces have been made now permanent parking places instead of, you know, the, 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 the off, off peak parking of parking spaces. There are certain pockets where some of the parking have been removed because of the, the improvements at the intersections, but they are mostly uh, isolated at uh, uh, Benning Street and, and Central Avenue intersection. So as you can see here, I mean, that's, thanks Donna for bringing this up. As you can see, uh, in all these blocks, we are keeping like 37 to 38 spaces remain as is. We lose two parking spaces near the, the floating bus stop because of the bike pedestrians kind of, you know, uh, connections there. So most of the places, parking spaces are kept as is in residential and, and, and other uh, public amenities areas. And in some places, actually, we added the parking lanes also. I mean, yeah, the parking spaces, like you can see. Uh, bottom of the screen between 52nd and 53rd, we added 12 new spaces. Uh, adjacent to 52nd, we added three new spaces. So we added some more parking spaces there. Okay, I have a question. You made a statement that the uh, speed cameras will be um, addressed at the next phase. Now, why is that at the next phase when we talk about saving lives? And that's and something it, very simple to put up a speed camera. Uh, we're talking about the same project, uh, just the next stage of design. So of, when of is this that? Project. Uh, we're hoping to get that uh, in, in play in early 2002. No, you see, that's, not acceptable for, um, that's not acceptable for the neighbors here. Not and acceptable we're to get this at all. Project in the field um, in 2003. So that, 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 that is a tight uh, design schedule for um, a project of this length. But, um, you know, if what we're taking away from this meeting today is precious in terms of being able to implement um, some more mitigation, mitigation measures. And your ideas, uh, believe me, they will be um, they will be addressed and uh, we will implement uh, mitigation measures to, to and you know I, I i am aware of the accidents that happen along here and the fatality the recent fatalities down towards the western end and that this is why this is you know 
th th this project is um, w w one of Ward Seven and Eight um, critical projects to get to get completed. But capital projects critical? of this nature and size. I'm oh, sorry. Capital projects of this nature and size um, do take a while to um, get designed, get designed properly, get the input from people like yourselves, and get it right. And thank you very much for your um, valuable input. Yeah, if yeah. if I can jump in here, David. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, what, what David's saying is this is a capital project, a, a large roadway construction project, and um, it's looking at engineering and design and roadway construction type uh, 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 factors. Um, we what I can do is talk to our Vision Zero uh, office and, and our the, our automated enforcement um, um, office and talk to them about what are the plans because there there are folks looking at um, taking comments. Looking at roadway crash patterns and looking at where we can redeploy, change the location of of, uh, of speed cameras. So, um, it doesn't have to be on the timeline of this project. Um, uh, so we can take a look. I'll, I'll take this back to our Vision Zero and our, our automated traffic enforcement um, office and see if, um, if they have any plans. Um, and, and we'll we'll, we'll respond um, to to you to find out what's going on with that because there may be something in the works. Thank you, Mr. Brandon. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, thank you, um, George and Samir and David for answering that last question. I wanted to go to another raised hand. We have from Mr. Ronnie Streff. Ronnie, are you still on the line? I am. Um, okay. And good to hear from you again, George. Um, I know that you've been involved with this project for a long time and almost got hit on Central Avenue Northeast back in 2012. Um, the, the Southern the Avenue to 58th Northeast, the crosswalk and the jaywalking, jaywalking. that's an issue on this entire corridor. Um, if something could be looked at for putting very thorny bushes in all of the medians to cut back on jaywalking and adding for the green, um, that would be appreciated. Um, on the Central Avenue Southeast slip, um, can vehicles still enter that slip from East Capitol? Because if they can, they can. Um, and so that would really, while it might slow them down getting in there, it's still going to be a major issue. If they can cross that green barrier, which I'm not quite sure if that's just paint, um, and go through that crosswalk. If that's wide enough for cars to get through, they're going to do that. Um, the um, on the northeast side, that that driveway is it the existing driveway that opens onto Central Avenue? Am I correct mm -hmm. that that's now opening onto East Capitol? Um, it looks that way, but I believe that's. I can't quite I can't tell if that that second row house hasn't, if the driveway is just not showing in that green area, um, or how that worked. Um, the on bike lanes, is it, is it? I'm assuming that it's been looked at as far as switching the bike lane and the parking lane, so that the so bike lane is next to the curb, which would then allow for the bulb out to be larger and go out further because currently it ends at the beginning of the bike lane um, to add that visual for the drivers. Um, um, I wanted to um, add my hand to the person who was asking for the speed cameras. We do need a lot more speed cameras and they can also help with the ATV issue because then we have more images of the uh, ATV riders um, and one thing I wanted to notice note was the accommodation for Maryland drivers. There's been many people on many different sides of different issues relating to this project, but that's been one that's been agreed on by everyone is that we don't care about Maryland drivers and accommodating them should not be a priority in this design. Um, and then could you go back to the slide for the Benning Road Metro where you showed that?
the actual metro where you could see the metro station in the slide from the ground. There, that there, picture. That. Um, the crosswalk at the bottom going across Central Avenue terminates in that fence. Can we get rid of that fence and have a direct route to the station? People walking from the metro station are not going to go down the sidewalk as the person who was talking about the crosswalks and jaywalking at the other end. People cross in the middle of Central Avenue, jaywalk, going either in either direction. But if we made it a little bit easier for them to get to the crosswalk, um, understanding human, uh, human nature, they will uh, use the crosswalk more often. But clearly there, the crosswalk ends in a fence. Well, the, the answer to that is we're still developing the design for the end of line for Benning Road. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking at two potential options. Um, right. I'm sure once um, they're made available yeah. to the public, there's going to be a lot of appreciation for what we're doing with pedestrians in that area. Now, there's a distinction here between Vermonta um, right of way and our right of way. There is going to be uh, some take for DDOT's project. And you know, I, I, I doubt very much this fence is going to be here um, for either of those options that we're looking at. We're looking at central. Uh, we're looking at central road stop, and we're looking at a side stop, uh, which takes out of the um, metro metro land away. So, to, in short, yes, um, there are going to be some major reconfigurations here for pedestrian traffic. Great, because Great. that because one is just. Um, I've lived um, on Central Avenue here for. Of, well, for 20 years, and that direct line of sight from the crosswalk to the metro entrance, entrance. being blocked by that fence has struck me as the most idiotic thing, I've, and I have never been able to get through to anyone. If, if somebody has connections to metro that can, you know, say, you know, can we just cut the fence and, and, you know, pour a little bit of concrete there or lay down some bricks or just some rock. People could walk to the crosswalk. Good point taken. Thank you. Sure. No. Thanks, David, and and thank you so much for uh, all 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 the valuable comments. Starting from uh, adding some vegetation on the median to uh, access at the Slipknot Central Avenue to some of the improvements on the bike lanes connectivity from parking to bike lanes and then curb extension, as well as related to the, the driveway, the north of East Capitol at Central Avenue. So I, I think we have all those suggestions from you and uh, we are a little over the hour right now, but uh, we definitely will continue considering that as as we move forward in the with the next phases of design. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um so uh it seems like there's more raised hands. Um I know that uh our uh D dot uh, Liaison here, Suha, has mentioned that we're going to go for another 10, 15 minutes just to try to get to more of the questions that are becoming over the phone. Um, and as a reminder, we will be answering all questions on the project website with the FAQ page. Um, I wanted to call on next uh, Ms. Shannon Mills. Shannon, are you there? Yes, thank you very much. Um, thanks for holding this meeting and for considering the um, input from the community. I want to echo what people have said already about the bike lanes and the importance of having protected bike lanes. Um, I also wanted to say that I think having a paint only bike lane on East Capitol is actually potentially more dangerous than having no bike lane at all because a paint only bike lane encourages people to view it as a safe place for biking 
and encourages more people to bike on that space, which is full of speeding and reckless and aggressive drivers. And I, I hope that some of the traffic calming measures you're going to put in place will help with that. But I, I don't believe that it will eliminate the danger um, of cycling on East Capitol. So I would really encourage you to put in barriers um, the entire length of the bike lane. Um, I wanted to ask about the Benning Road intersection. Um, if you could go back to the overhead view. Um, as a couple of other people have mentioned, there are a lot of places along East Capitol where people cross outside of designated crosswalks. And one in particular that I think is is quite dangerous is on the west, sorry, on the east side of the Benning Road intersection. Um, the bus stops that are on each side of the road. Um, so there's one that's kind of in front of the shrimp boat, and then there's one that is in front of like the wings place. Um, those, the location of those bus stops combined with the, the ability of people who are exiting the metro to cut through the parking lot behind the shrimp boat means that people are constantly crossing um, East Capitol, like at that area that's sort of to the east of the actual intersection. So much so that there's actually like in the median, there's a dirt path because people walk that same path constantly. Um, and I'd like to know if you've considered ways to mitigate that dangerous crossing spot, either by like encouraging people to go to the crosswalks, discouraging them from crossing at the the dangerous, un, the, the place that's not a crosswalk or by even moving the bus stops so that it sort of doesn't encourage people to to try to access those without going through crosswalks. Yeah, no, thanks for, thanks for your question. Uh, as far as north side is concerned, as you can see, uh, the new location of uh, the bus stop is now very close to the to the crosswalk there. So that issue has been now eliminated because uh, the, the 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 floating bus stop has been kind of moved closer there. And uh, as as David also mentioned that uh, there, there is still going to be some. Or maybe I'm yeah, some consideration to provide the direct direct crosswalk across that a fence maybe in, in the next phase or, or when the Benning Street, when the street car project is there. So when that direct access is provided, I think that can eliminate that issue also there. And uh, for the south side, I mean, the bus stop is still kind of where it is in the in the original location. And the reason is we, we had explored the option of moving the bus stop closer to, to the intersection, but due to some engineering geometric constraints and due to the minimum bay length that is required for the for the bus floating bus stop we cannot move it for the west there uh, but that suggestion is taken um, we have heard it from uh, several people during during the meeting today one of the one of the uh, suggestion that was really good was to have some kind of vegetation on on the on the median also to to eliminate the direct crossing there, but but we we, we are going to explore it a little bit more to to ensure that uh, that jaywalking is avoided at this intersection if that really is the case. Okay, uh, thank you, Samir, for that answer. Um, I wanted to go to another hand raised by Mr. Anders Peterson. Or Pedersen, sorry. Are you on the line? Yes. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Um, yes. Thanks. Thanks very much for this meeting and for a very detailed presentation. Uh, it's clear that DDOT and ACOM, you thought a lot about this since two, 2012. Uh, that said, uh, yeah. I agree with all the concerns raised by others in this meeting about the lack of protected bike lanes on this route. Um, I really want to highlight like how dangerous a stretch we are talking about. 
if we have speeds up to 30 miles per hour and a bicyclist is going in the in an unprotected lane it's really just a matter of a parked vehicle opening the door and flipping the bicyclist into the lane and then we have another traffic fatality we've had 16 fatalities this year and i've heard uh, you talk about constraints but i haven't heard vision zero and all the deaths that we are seeing on our streets as a major constraint. It's not only about level of service. It's really, we got to do more for safety. I really like the suggestion highlighted around pushing the parked vehicles uh, further out so that we can have the protected bike lanes on the inside. Uh, I really agree that that also gives a fantastic opportunity for bringing the bulb out further out and thereby reducing the amount of feet that pedestrians have to cross. Um, and I would also highlight that this stretch of the uh, East Capitol was actually dedicated for protected bike lane in the uh, in the Move DC plan from from 2014. The Move DC plan from 2014 include protected bike lane as a clear legend through this entire stretch. So if DDOT goes ahead and does something else, that's against the 2014 uh, uh, Move DC plan. I also would like to ask if DDOT can point to any other uh, deployed unprotected bike lane in the district that's placed next to two lanes of cars going up to 30 miles per hour. I cannot think of any example. I can think of examples of unprotected bike lanes where you have just one lane of vehicles at maybe 20 or 25, but this amount of traffic, I have not seen DDOT deploy unprotected bike lanes next to it, and I think it's deadly. I agree with those concerns. And so I appreciate, Samir, you've shared a lot of constraints. I appreciate it's a, it's a difficult challenge, but the current design is deadly for bicyclists. I'm sorry to say. We need protected bike lanes. Uh, no, thank you so much for that, that comment. I mean, I mean, yeah, we have been hearing uh, the same concerns uh, from several people throughout this this presentation and uh, and I George and David have been you know uh, giving the answers as you already said talking about the concerns and constraints there along the location uh, some of the suggestions in terms of the bulb outs and and kind of making transition more safer that's definitely is going to be uh, considered in in this design as we move forward with the next phases uh, for the for the locations where we have the the unprotected bike lanes, uh, uh, we we definitely will go back and see if there is some kind of barrier be accommodated within the 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 width that we have without eliminating another lane because as you know we have eliminated from three to two lanes now now, and, uh, and then of course there was another concern that maybe we can eliminate parking lanes but that's again not possible along the entire corridor as another person has concern about removing the parking lanes in those areas but but having said that i think we understand uh, public has people have major major concern with this unprotected bike lane so so yeah we, we will be looking into it and and, and moving forward from here, we see what, what can be done. But again, as Josh said, we all have to understand it's it's very, very difficult because of the limited right of way within the area and the constraints that we have been talking about throughout the presentation at median location where uh, Vomata uh, vents and ducts are located, which is not possible to relocate. So, I mean, I can rest assured that during the planning stage, a lot of head banging was done to 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 accommodate the, the protected bike lane along the corridor, but there was no success. But as you highlighted, uh, yeah, we are going to go back and discuss this as one of the major priorities. Thank you so much. And, and sorry to follow up. Could I could I ask Dida also to explain why this is not uh, aligned with the Move DC plan from 2014? Well, we, um, 
one of the assignments of this project was for our consultant to review raised curbs, uh, various mitigation measures. And, um, yeah, we're, we're, as Sina said, we're going to go back to um, re, you know, re-review, uh, you know, see, see how we can um, get closer to something that is uh, going to be acceptable for th this location. So, you know, we're thirty percent. I, I, I keep on reiterating thirty percent early days, um, and you know. I think some of the observations from people who live here today, I, I just want to go out there myself and w with my project team, go to some of these locations and, you know, just visualize what's what's taking place so that we can, um, you know, so, so that we can put in some good um, practical mitigation measures that are, that are going to meet your needs. Uh, you, you know, this, is a, this is a thoroughfare, it's access to the city, it's so it keeps the city running. At the same time, um, pedestrians and safety first, safety and first. vision zero. <laughs> so we will be, um, you know, you know, moving towards the 65% is, and then we'll we'll probably reach out again at that point, and um, with some, um, you know, with some developed uh, design considerations that meet that meet your needs, and we, we look forward to presenting those in the future. But I, I think um, I, I, I've had a lot of feedback from people within the meeting, and I, I, I need to draw the meeting towards an end. So this is a sort of time where we transition from um, verbal verbal questions um, virtually to paper, and uh, I'll hand it back to Samir to uh, or um, or Asia okay, to you. continue from here. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, well, I wanted to uh, thank you all for uh, coming today uh, virtually uh, and to remind you that you can submit your questions if you didn't get a chance to ask them today um, to us via email uh, or online. Um, here's a recap of how to do so. Um, Samuel Olatunji at samuel.olatunji.dc.gov. You can also call him at 202-671-4637. Um, you can also go online at rebrand.ly slash East Capital Safety dash comments. And that comment form will appear as soon as this meeting concludes. Um, also, you can contact my colleague Jamie Phillips at jphillips at inspiregreen.com or 202-643-3489. And we'll be taking all the comments we've heard today over the phone and in the chat, as well as what you submit in the coming weeks um, to into an FAQ page. Uh, please submit your comments by Tuesday, May 18th, so that we can get all of that, those great ideas together to inform this design and uh, the designs still to come. So thank you very much and have a great evening. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay.